This is our single cycle MIPS CPU processor. Um, as you can see, we have all these different control units, the control unit, AL unit, the ALU itself, and the register file, which we're about to take a look at. So here's the register file. It combines together eight register cells, which each hold four registers each. That gives us our 32 registers. Here's one of the register cells. It um, holds the four registers, takes the three inputs, RA, RB, and RW, which control whether or not that uh, each register is open for reading on bus A or bus B versus uh, writing to on bus W. Uh, the splitters, as we're about to look at here, um, reconnect the the three inputs that are four wide to being, you know, four three wide inputs, outputs. Um, next we're going to look at one of the registers themselves, which take those inputs and, you know, correctly connect to each of the buses. Here we have the register itself, we're using an actual MIPS register component to implement the register. Um, bus W gets fed directly into that, and the write control signal gets fed into that to enable the register for writing, and there's the clock that connects to that, um, and then the output of the register is fed directly to bus A and B, and the connection to that is controlled by a tri-state buffer, so that the control signals for bus A and bus B can activate or deactivate that as necessary. Then we have, next we're going to look at um, a zero register, which uh, is basically just a, a hardwired register, as you'll see. There's just a constant zero in there, and still the same tri-state buffers, but the control signal for writing is completely ignored, as is the clock. Here's uh, another zipper, which is just the same as the earlier one, but this one is four times as wide, so that we can connect it to uh, four of the register cells. So next we'll take a look at the PC controller. It's set up exactly like we have it in class. So now you can see here that we have various signals, jump and two branch signals. We have them wired up so that they output one signal and that will go out into the data path. So next we're going to look at the control unit. As you see the opcode gets read in and we, we made our own decoder and it selects a corresponding operation that we need and outputs a bunch of different uh, outputs that control the rest of the data path along with the ALU opcode which is determined through this encoder that we used and that talks to the ALU control unit in the main cycle and this is the brain of the whole CPU. And then with the ALU control unit, the function comes into it, it's decoded, and then from that output, we encode back through what the ALU opcode will be, whether it adds, subtract, etc. Next, we're going to look at the 32-bit ALU we designed, and for this, we did 32 1-bit ALUs, which is kind of a lot, but as you see there, there's a zero flag down there to show that when it's uh, equal, and we just wired them all together. So when we look into the one-bit ALU, you, you see we have the AND, the OR, the XOR, the NOR. We have an adder with the subtract bit that helps us with two, two's complement. So it bit flips and then adds one, which is able to give us the two's complement. And they all go into a uh, multiplexer, which is controlled by the ALU control uh, that we talked about earlier. And then it is all wired up into here and uh, outputs a into a 32-bit register, whether it's AND or all of the ALU um, operations. And then again, there's that zero flag to show that uh, it, the zero flag will tick when both of them are equal, and that helps with our branch, uh, our branch operation. And that is our single cycle MIPS uh, CPU for our course project. We had a lot of fun designing this. It was definitely a lot of work, very challenging, but definitely rewarding when we finished. Uh, to conclude the video, we are going to show two test videos that uh, we made. Um, uh, out of the three programs we had, we recorded two of them, and they are here. So we hope you enjoy, and have a happy holidays.